In this incomplete records topic video, we'll be looking at one aspect of the topic, the use of margin and markup. We'll be using margin and markup percentages to convert sales revenue into a cost of sales figure, and also vice versa, a cost of sales figure into sales revenue. This is really important because using this technique will allow us to calculate a missing figure in the gross profit section using the margin or markup percentage as the start point of a set of calculations. This technique is often found in incomplete records exam questions, and you might need to use the technique in order to complete an income statement, so this is really important. What are margin and markup? Let's start off with the definition. Gross profit margin is calculated as gross profit divided by revenue multiplied by 100, so it's stated as a percentage. So margin is the percentage of revenue that results in gross profit. We can use this to state gross profit margin in the following way. Our start point is going to be the revenue, and we will deem this to be 100. The gross profit margin is the percentage of revenue that is gross profit. So let's imagine the gross profit margin is 15. So of the 100 that represents revenue, 15 of this is gross profit and the rest is cost of sales. So notice then that we can calculate cost of sales here as being revenue of 100 minus gross profit margin of 15 giving a cost of sales of 85. We'll be able to use this relationship in a moment in order to be able to convert between revenue and cost of sales figures. Before we do this, we need to look at gross profit markup. Gross profit markup is calculated as gross profit divided by cost of sales multiplied by 100. Notice the difference in the formula. We've now replaced revenue by cost of sales. So although these formulae look very similar, they are quite different. So markup is the percentage of profit added to the cost of sales to result in a selling price. We can state markup in the following way. This time, cost of sales is our start point, and we will deem that to be 100. If the gross profit markup is 15, this is the amount of profit that we add to cost of sales in order to result in a revenue figure. So here the revenue is the cost of sales of 100 plus the gross profit markup of 15, resulting in a revenue of 115. Have a look at these two ways of stating margin and markup shown in the two red rectangles. Please make sure you're very clear about these before you move on, because these are fundamentally important and if you don't remember these ways of stating the relationships, then you won't be able to do the calculations correctly. So pause the video, jot these down and make sure you're familiar with them. So how do we use them? It's very common in exam questions on the incomplete records topic that you're given the marginal markup percentage and one out of the sales revenue or cost of sales figures and then you're required to calculate cost of sales or sales revenue using the information you've been given. This then can help you to calculate other missing figures. For example, imagine you have a trading account like the one that's shown here. You're only given the sales revenue, opening inventory and purchases figure, and you're told what the margin or markup percentage is. You can use the marginal markup percentage and the sales revenue to calculate a cost of sales figure. Once you have this, you can use the cost of sales equation to calculate the missing closing inventory figure. I'll show you an example like this a little bit later on. Alternatively, you could have a question that provides you with information about opening inventory, purchases and closing inventory and you're given the cost of sales figure, but you don't have a sales revenue figure to show in your income statement. You can use the margin or markup percentage that you're told in the question, combined with the cost of sales figure, in order to calculate that missing sales revenue figure. 
So this technique is extremely important in building an income statement using the information about margin or markup percentages. Example one, if margin is 25% and sales revenue is 18,000 pounds, what is the cost of sales? This is really typical in incomplete records questions. So how do you go about doing this calculation? Well, there's a tried and tested method that I'm going to show you here, and this will help you to get the right answer every time. Now, to start with, the first thing to notice is that this is a gross profit margin question. And that's really important to identify because this will tell us which order to write down the figures in our little table that I've shown here. So because it's margin, we're going to start off with sales revenue, take away from that the gross profit margin to give us a cost of sales. In percentage terms then, using the 25% given in this question, the sales revenue is our start point of 100, the gross profit margin is 25 as stated, meaning that the cost of sales is 100 minus 25, which equals 75. Now let's write in the other piece of information we've been told, the sales revenue being £18,000. And the question then is how much is the cost of sales figure? Now this table is really useful and I'll show you the method now to calculate the value of that question mark. The reason why the technique I'm going to show you is so useful is because you can use the same approach for every single question and I'll show you some more examples later on in the video. So how do we work out the value of this question mark, the cost of sales figure? The first thing to do then is to take the figure that you are already told, the sales revenue of £18,000. That's the start point for our little calculation. The next thing to do is to have a look in the percentage column next to that known figure. You can see here it's 100. And we're going to take the figure that we know, the 18,000, and divide it by the percentage that is next to it in the table. So 18,000 divided by 100. The final thing to do is to multiply by the figure that is next to the question mark in the percentage column. You can see here that that's 75. Putting those figures into your calculator will give you an answer of £13,500. And that's the value of the cost of sales. If I went through that a little bit too quickly for you, why not rewind the video and make sure that you can follow it through yourself? Maybe you could write down the figures and have a go at the calculation yourself to make sure that you really get the method. I'll move on now to another example that's similar to show you that this technique works in every case. So this time we'll have a look at a markup question. If the markup is 60% and the sales revenue is £26,000, what is the value of cost of sales? We draw a table again, but this time we notice that it's a markup question, and that again affects the order that we write down the figures in that table. Remember with markup, our start point is cost of sales, which we deem to be 100. We add to that the gross profit markup, which in this question is 60, to give us a sales revenue represented as 100 plus 60, which is 160. We now write in, in the pound column, the figure that we know. Sales revenue is 26,000 pounds. The question then is what is the value of the cost of sales? I've shown that by a question mark. And now we use the technique that's exactly the same as previously to calculate the value of that question mark, the cost of sales. So let me go through it one more time. We take the figure that we know, which is the sales revenue of 26,000 pounds, and then we look at the figure next to it in the percentage column, which is the 160. We take the 26,000 then and divide it by this figure, the 160. Finally, we multiply by the figure in the percentage column that is next to the question mark. In this case, this is 100. Putting these figures into your calculator gives an answer for cost of sales of £16,250. Notice that this technique was exactly the same as we did before, even though this time it's a markup question rather than a margin question. And that's the beauty of this method. 
I hope you're enjoying this video. Subscribers to our website www.studytheeasyway.com have access to topic videos like this one that cover the whole A-level accounting syllabus. In addition, there are worksheets with exam which have answers and explanations that fully explain what's going on in the question and how to get to the answer. There are also online multiple choice quizzes which give you immediate feedback and a score. When it comes to revision time, there are loads of revision questions and answers and even past papers. Let's continue now with the video. Example three. You can even use this technique to calculate a missing gross profit figure if that's what you need to do. So I'll show you a quick example of this. If margin is 40% and cost of sales is £30,000, what is the gross profit? Again, noticing this is a margin question allows us to fill in the three categories here in the right order. Sales revenue minus the gross profit margin equals cost of sales. Remember that we deem the sales revenue to be the start point of 100. We take away the margin of 40 to give us cost of sales of 60. We know the cost of sales is 30,000 and so I fill that into the table. And this time our question mark is against the gross profit because that's the figure we're trying to calculate. Calculating the value of the question mark is done in exactly the same way as before. We take the figure that we know, 30,000, and divide it by the figure that is next to it in the um, percentage column, which is 60 in this case. Finally, we multiply by the figure that is in the percentage column next to the question mark, in this case 40. Putting these figures into your calculator gives you a value of gross profit of £20,000. Finally, we're going to move on to example four, which is a little bit more involved and is really similar to the kind of question you might encounter in an incomplete records question. So you're given the following information. The gross profit markup is 50%. Sales revenue is £90,000. Opening inventory is £12,000 and closing inventory £14,000. The question then is what is the value of purchases? I always find with a question like this, the best start point is to draw out a small trading account and then to fill in the information that you know and to put question marks next to the information that you don't know. I think this is really helpful in understanding exactly what the best technique to get to those missing figures is. You can see here that I filled in the known information, the sales revenue, the opening inventory and the closing inventory. And I've put question marks next to the figures that we don't yet know, purchases, cost of sales and gross profit. We're going to take a two step approach here to calculating that missing purchases figure. Step one will be to calculate the cost of sales figure using the revenue figure and the markup percentage. And that's really similar to the examples that we've been doing so far in the video. In step two, we'll calculate the purchases figure. And to do this, we'll use the cost of sales equation. I'll show you how in just a minute. So let's start off then with step one. I've drawn out the same table as before. You'll recognise this and notice that it's a markup question. This tells us to start with cost of sales and deem that to be 100. We add to that the gross profit markup of 50, giving a sales revenue represented by 150 percentage points. I've completed the known information being the sales revenue of £90,000 and put a question mark next to the figure we don't know, the cost of sales. So we calculate that missing cost of sales figure as being the figure that we know, 90,000, divided by the figure in the column next to it, 150, and then multiplying by the figure in the percentage column next to the question mark, 100. This gives us a cost of sales figure of £60,000. We can now partially complete the trading account because we know that the cost of sales is 60000 and deducting that from the sales revenue figure of 90000 gives us gross profit of 30000 we can now move on to step two, which is to calculate the missing purchases figure. And to do this, we use the cost of sales equation. Opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory 
is equal to cost of sales. You can see that I've written it out again here, putting in the figures that we know. We now simply rearrange that equation to put purchases on the left hand side and the other figures on the right hand side of the equals sign. So purchases is equal to 60,000 minus the 12,000 that we've moved from the other side of the equation plus the 14,000 that we also moved. That gives us a purchases figure of £62,000. And that completes the answer to this question. I hope in this video you found it really useful to be able to understand now how to convert between revenue and cost of sales using the margin or markup percentage, and then how we can use that in order to calculate other missing figures such as purchases. You might find in incomplete records questions that the other missing figures in this section could be things like goods for own use or stolen goods, and all of these can be calculated using a similar technique to what we've just done. So we let's finish there. And can I just finish the video by just mentioning what subscribers to our website have access to? Once you've subscribed, you get access to our website, which has full information about all of the topics that are included in the A-Level Accounting syllabus. Resources are accessed by clicking on the menu as shown here. Once you've chosen a topic, a full list of the resources available is shown. This includes topic videos that cover every aspect of A-level accounting, as well as other resources such as worksheets, which have answers, and also multiple choice quizzes, which you can do online, which give you immediate feedback and score. You can find us on social media. Our Instagram account is updated every week with check your knowledge questions and these of course are completely free to use. Please visit our website www.studytheeasyway.com to find out more about subscribing and also to check out the freebie resources that are available there. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it's been useful.